Welcome to the Drive Network, another banger Tuesday with your boy Big Box. The Drive Network is a podcast that's inspired to, uh, that's driven to inspire you through what the good people around your neighborhood do uh, for a living. And uh, today I'm with a very interesting woman, Women's Month. And the lady is uh, Polvia from PS Debt. Not just from PS Debt, by the way. She owns the company, she's a founder. How are you? Welcome to, to, to the Drive Network, uh, Bogart Radio Series. Thank you so much for having me. The studio is so beautiful. I'm so glad to be here. <laughs> Thank you. We try, man. We try. We can, you can also shop around. Uh, you know, we, 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 we get all the types of clothing yeah. or if we can call it fashion. So, so, so you, you feel free to, to look around, shop around if you can. But yeah, no, thank you so much for making time. I want to dive into your story, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to dive into it and understand what inspired you to really assert yourself as an as a, as a, as a impactful woman entrepreneur in the debt management space. Sure. Uh, it's a very long story, but I'm going to try to make it short. So Take your um, time. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, how I got into this industry, um, I was working for another company. Um, I was doing um, I was doing sales. I was a sales consultant there at one of the at that time. It was one of the biggest uh, uh, debt review companies. And uh, I, I got to learn about, you know, how people can get out of debt, you mm. know, how that there's a solution for people that are over indebted. And at that time, um, I was also over indebted. You know, I had a lot of credit. I had a lo the, any credit that you can think <laughs> of. I had your credit cards. Clothing accounts, clothing credit accounts, card. micro lenders, Mashonis, you oh. know, all those type <laughs> of, 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 of debts. And um, I didn't realize, but there is a solution to get people out of debt. I think people just don't know much about it. Or even if they um, they have limited knowledge when it comes to, um, you know, remedial actions that are offered in South Africa to get them out of debt. Correct. So, um, so that's how I started. I, I, I started as a sales consultant. And then from there, I just loved um, what was happening, helping people get out of debt. And long story short, our company um, decided to open a branch in Pretoria. Yeah. And then uh, I decided to come this side, I think about a year later, then they decided to close the Pretoria office. And uh, before then, um, just before they decided to close the Pretoria office, they identified a few individuals in the company that were doing well. And, and I was one of those, fortunate enough, I was one of those individuals. And uh, my former boss decided, hey, look, we'll take you to do the debt counseling course and stuff, fully Correct. paid by the company and you are then going to you know you'll register on your own you'll become a registered debt counselor and and that's how it started and um so after i did the course i couldn't register then because i still had a lot of dates right yeah so I had to clear my dates first. <laughs> so practice on your own. <laughs> yes. So I had to clear my dates first and um, before I could register as a date counselor. And eventually I did. I think after uh, one year of commitment to paying all my dates up, I then decided to, you know, uh, register as a date counselor. However, I was still practicing under that company. Correct. So um, when they decided to close uh, the Pretoria office, I then decided, look, let me, the yeah. Let me give this a try. Let me give this a try. And that's how it started. But it didn't just start from the, I mean, I uh, started, I think a few months later, I decided, okay, I don't know much about business. I know about the process of Correct. getting out of debt, but uh, not so much about running a business. I had to go back, apply for other jobs, and just um, so that I could get enough skills, enough knowledge yeah, in, on, on the whole process and also just running a business. Great, man. And, and I think if I hear you correctly, for you to be in this business, you need to first clear your debt. Yes. Oh, wow. So so that's a qualification criteria. Yeah, it, it is um, because, you know, um, you have to register with the national credit regulator of which they do do a check oh. um, to, share that, to see that are you uh, eligible to advise people on debts? Um, are you managing your debts? Are you able to, you know, pay up your debts and, st and so forth? Are you not over indebted yourself? You know, uh, not to say that they want someone who does not have debts at all. Correct, um, correct. They just want you to be in a position Healthy where debt. you are uh, able to manage that uh, debt, even when the unforeseen happens, you'd still need to be in a position to make sure that you manage your, your debts on a monthly basis. Awesome, awesome. And, 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 and I just want to understand 
why why were you compelled to assist people with their credit scores is it anything to do with your background w- w- why um not really um you know w- when i got into the in- industry for me it was just another job that i needed the job to pay for my fees <laughs> yeah. and that was just the bottom line and for forward. your debt <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um um so it was more of just getting a job and um you know paying for my fees to further my studies and that was just about it until i realized that okay but this process is helping a lot of people i mean at, at that time we used to have um on a on a monthly basis you have uh, 100 clients that you know that are coming in to say that we need help Correct. and i was like okay so this is working so the more research i i, I did on the process uh, on the debt counseling or debt review process i then got to realize that a lot of people are over indebted yeah and a lot of people are reaching out however there's misconception with regards to how the process works okay. uh, and so forth then i was like okay so this is actually quite a good process that can get people out of debt um also when you, they they're able to to keep their assets Correct. um you know because some other remedial actions require you to sell your assets to get out of debt so now this one was um a rather special compared to the other remedial actions that we yeah did. so 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 for me because i'm thinking now a woman's month i cannot cannot shy away from that yeah and I just want to know, finalist uh, this year uh, at the Mail and Garden, uh, Power of Women, right? Yeah. Uh, how does that, <laughs> uh, you know, does that recognition motivate you? And does it add any pressure to you not to drop the ball at all? How does that feel? You know, it, it, to be honest, it inspires me to, to be recognized um, because sometimes as an entrepreneur, you think that you're not doing enough. Mm. Um, there are times where we are, I'm hard on myself only because there are certain things that I want to achieve. And uh, you somehow get, um, you know, um, g- get clouded up by everything that's happening, what you want to achieve, uh, am I where I want to be, that you kind of look, overlook the things that you have done, the good things that you have done and Correct. the achievements that you have done. And it sort of becomes like... Uh, I don't know, for lack of better words, you feel like you're not doing enough. So when such things happen, you kind of realize, oh, okay, so I'm still on the right track. There's something good that I'm doing. There's something profound that I'm doing. (laughs) And then it just even motivates you uh, even more to say Mm. that I need to keep going, Um, you know, just just for being a finalist, being recognized already for me. Uh, I mean, it's such a big uh, publication. It's such a big company, credible. And so you can imagine the the, the the it doesn't give me pressure uh, um, at all however it does actually make me uh, feel better about what i've done that what i've done it's enough but however i do need to keep pushing forward and striving for more correct 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 and for me i just want to know uh what are the challenges that you faced as a businesswoman? Yeah. Because, you know, the, there's, there's that say that this is a man's world, blah, blah, blah. I don't yeah. believe that. But what are the challenges that you faced as a, as a businesswoman? The, the, the number one challenge um, that I've realized about business is that, um, you know, in order for your business to grow, you need to work on yourself. And I think the biggest challenge was working on myself, working on my brand, working on who Povia is, so that, um, you know, I get to, remember, I'm uh, we offering a service. Uh, Correct. And, and a service and a product are completely different. So that means that with a service, I constantly have to keep improving myself so that I can improve the service and then offer it, you know, better than I did last time. Absolutely. So uh, the pressure of just working on myself and also uh, being credible as well, because nowadays, you, you know, as you've mentioned, that uh, it's said that it's a man, a male world, uh, it's a man's world. However, in in, in 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 our industry, it's yes, it is male dominated, um, especially with uh, in terms of the companies, debt review companies. It's mostly um, a, a white owned male. So now here comes a, a, a village girl, and now she just wants to you know be part. Of, 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 of the competition, you know, of be part of the package, you know, because this is how people look at it. Uh, I see myself as, you know, uh, you when you start, you just see yourself as someone just trying to do something different. But however, how people see us is just another company 
just just trying to be you know in business there's nothing different it's just competition but um working on myself i would say that that was the biggest challenge and also trying to be relevant in the industry you know you already have companies that have been operating for 10 15 20 years and then now you have to not really compete uh, but you have to be in line and actually Correct. become relevant and when you look at their uh, work experience it speaks for itself yeah so yeah. now having to build that so that the company speaks for itself some some companies you don't even need to market them or advertise them they just stand out and having to build that uh it does say it takes a lot out of yeah. a person. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you touched on something very i think you said uh working on yourself as a service who paul via is yeah who is Paul Via? What's unique about PS manage uh, debt management? And growing up, did you think that you'd be ran or running this this empire? To be honest <laughs> with you, um, growing up, I, I never thought I would be where I am um, because. Even growing up, uh, I, I I remember I wanted to be at one point I wanted to be a journalist, and then the other time I wanted to be a politician. So there was just a <laughs> whole lot of uh, um, you know different uh, um, things that I wanted to do. But I, I I don't think I really knew that I would be here. Uh, I might have had a clue, but not not entirely. I remember that um, people think that this is actually my first business, and it's not. Uh, I think it's the only one that has um, survived. Succeeded. <laughs> 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 so I remember I just started simple things uh, um, in, in metric when we were writing our exams. Um, this is how I actually started in, in, in anything. Um, I, I wanted money. Like I, I always, that person that always wanted to have a little bit of extra something. Yes. And um, so growing up as well, I grew up from, uh, I would say, a well-off family. I had my father there and he passed away. And unfortunately, I had to go back to the village to go stay with my grandmother. And so obviously that was just a new uh, environment altogether. So then I think that's when I had to grow up to say that, okay, you can't have, you can't want to be this tomorrow that you need to get to a point where you, you, you know, you're intentional about what you want to be in Correct. life. And um, that's where I just started, you know, investing in myself, learning what am I good at, um, you know, what do I love? And, you know, and I was always a person that would attend, you know, events, mostly at church. The church if, they would, would always offer these uh, events, um, you know, about purpose and stuff like that. Yeah. And I used to attend a lot of that. And... Um, but long story short, I think what makes Polvia different from others is that, especially within the debt industry, it's it's not something that I've learned, um, you know, I mean, theoretically, um, I've I've been in debt, I've I've been over indebted, so and you've I lived the debt. I've <laughs> lived that, and I know the trauma, I know the pain, I know the, the the mental issues involved when it comes to debt. I know what it means to to get paid today, and five minutes later, there's no money in your bank account. Um, I know know the pain of not being able to pay for for even in tw 20 rand for a taxi you know uh I, I know the pain of that and i think it what 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 makes it a lot more easier for me is that um there's already sympathy when clients come to 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 me to say that look i need help i'm like oh don't worry um we've got this we'll find a way mm. uh, around this and we'll make sure that you get out of date and i think that's what uh, sympathy and com you know uh, and compassion compassion Correct. is one of our values at ps that management so i think having that it makes it a lot different because you know with other companies that grown companies you're just part of the you know numbers um mm. you know but with us we try to have a you know a, a relationship beyond you know just assisting you with your dates you just check up on you find out how are you doing how's your family and i think just that compassion touch um it makes a lot things a lot it makes us different you know from other companies yeah oh wow, man that's 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 incredible so i'm thinking surely financial literacy is a top priority to you right yeah. so t i just wanted you to take me through the journey of what have you applied when you purchased your own car uh, from a financial literacy perspective, just take me through what you applied, knowing what you know. And as we know that cars are one of the things that really uh, gets people in debt. Yeah. And people do make emotional decisions when they buy cars, right? Mm -hmm. So from a debt management perspective, what have you applied when you purchased your car? <laughs> so this is what I, I, I always say when it comes to cars, right? You have the car that you that you want to drive. 
And then you have the car that you can afford. Okay. Two different, <laughs> <laughs> you know, two different things. And I always look at um, what can I afford. So I look at my my income, how much I'm getting, and then I look at sh- should anything happen, will I be able mm. to maintain. Um, pray that either maybe for some form of you know uh, uh, getting a small income here and there whatever I look at that am I able to do that even out of hustle let's say I'm out of work yeah. uh, can I can I maintain that and normally if I say that the answer is no that means that I cannot afford it at all because remember that uh, a car it's supposed to it's something that's supposed to make your life easier okay. and uh, and fun and fun <laughs> yeah, yeah it's supposed to make your life easier you're supposed to you know you get your transport you go from from A to B, it's supposed to be, uh, you know, of help. You know, yeah. it's not supposed to be a burden. It becomes Correct. a burden when now you have uh, gotten a car that pr- pr- probably you couldn't afford at that time. Yeah. And I always say that the different stages of, of you know, getting, uh, you know, getting your, your your car. There's some as a point. There's a way you start, and where you start and where you end is different. Different, different, very points. different. I remember with my first car. Uh, my first car was an I ten. And good I choice, it, good choice. I, I bought it on auction, and uh, it was a lot uh, cheaper. I bought it on auction, it was second hand, and um, so it just had some um, TLC that I had to, you know, do in terms do of the on, body. Yeah. And uh, but I've never regretted that. Number one, I say actually saved up for, for for that car because I was working um, uh, my previous company. It was commissioned, so I I would work. I'd target to say that this is how much money I want to make on a monthly basis, and I'd get that on the commission that I'd make. Correct. I'd get commission, and then after that, that's how I got it on auction. And to be honest, um, I, I always say that if I am going to um, you know, take anything on finance. It really needs to be worth it, not just for the sake of of, of taking it because I qualify. Remember, you can qualify on paper, but in reality, it's a different yeah. thing altogether. And I think that's where a lot of people get, um, you know, get trapped in that. Okay, I've got an X amount of salary coming in. Uh, practically, when I look at the, you know. Uh, when I write down, when I look at the affordability, I can qualify for that. But you remember that car, it's not just about paying the monthly installment. There's so many things that you still need to pay for. You still need to make sure that you pay for insurance, tracker, petrol, and um Already in the installment, there is, um, you know, your certain value-added products that are still need to be paid for. There's interest. And remember that if you miss payment, there's interest on, all on, on that overdue on that account. Well. So it's really just um, about, you know, looking at what you can afford. And I think for me, likely because I was when I was over-indebted, I didn't have any anything like a car. I only had credit cards and loans and whatnot and clothing cards clothing accounts. Account. So there wasn't anything of value that I had then. And I think now when you look at sitting down and say, okay, I want to get account finance, you kind of look at, okay, um, how much am I paying on a monthly basis? How much interest is going towards this? And so forth. So I always tell people that um, and, and it's the simplest thing. If you cannot afford to pay full tank for your car, chances <laughs> are you cannot afford that car. It's as simple as that, you know? <laughs> It's literally that simple that <laughs> if you cannot afford to put full tank for that car, you can't afford are, your you car. Cannot afford <laughs> that car. So, and so I can you put full tank on your car? Oh now? yes. <laughs> 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 oh yes, I can. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and, and 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 you speak about your i10, but I, I want you know somebody's sitting there thinking she purchased the i10 through commission, but what is she purchasing now, and how are you doing it now? What what did you look at when you said I'm financing this car? Uh, yeah, um, if I'm going to be very honest with mm-hmm. you, um, I actually don't have a lot of things on credit except for one clothing account, wow. which, is ju- which is just to keep my credit score running. Running. Um, r- currently, I do not have anything on credit. The car that I even have now, it's actually a lease. <laughs> it's oh wow! So not, it's not take me finance. take me through that lease uh, agreement for what car is it? It's a Citroen. Citroen. Take yeah. me through the lease. Uh, what's the difference between the lease and financing? So financing, um, leasing, it's, it's uh, primarily they'll say that it's for people who do not qualify um, for financing. That's how they put it. Um, but also it's for people that would want to avoid the commitment of 
um, 72 months. Correct. You know, because remember with leasing, you lease it for a certain time. Yes, you sign a contract for a certain time. However, uh, remember that you can always um, cancel the contract provided you do it within uh, the stipulated time. Yeah. And um, you can also make sure that you, you, you downgrade. If you want to downgrade, you can upgrade after a few months if you want to do that. So there are a whole lot of um, pros and involved. There's a lot of uh, advantages in there. However, the disadvantage is that probably you'll have to pay up a large deposit upfront. And um, but I think that's one of the the only thing. The only thing. And if you there's no such thing as a reposition. If you can't afford to pay, you just take it we back. Take it back. It doesn't affect yeah. your your name. It doesn't affect your you know your credit report and so forth. But uh, you it, the installment is higher than what you would get. Under, oh, under a finance, finance yeah. uh, agreement. Under finance okay, okay. agreement. So the lease one, it's actually uh, a lot higher than under the, the, the finance. But the uh, reason why it's higher, remember, it's a rental, right? Yeah. So if the, there's damage on the car, they're supposed to do... Uh, they to fix, fix it themselves. It so, you're, not, uh, yeah. you're not liable it for that. It takes a bit long. Okay takes so long to get yeah. it fixed, but they eventually, you know, get it fixed and so forth, depending on what kind of problem it Correct. is. Um, you know, but obviously there's still insurance that you're paying for and so forth. There's still excess that still needs to be paid. paid yeah. So everything is still the same. Uh, the, only re the only difference is that this is not uh, a finance. It's not under your name. Um, however, if you do get a ticket fine... It's they, still for it's you. It's still but, but for you, but... You can walk away from it. You can walk it. away, yeah. You know, it, there is no commitment or attachment. Correct. You know, so anytime you can actually just decide that, look, this is not working for me, and then you can go uh, do what you feel would work better for you. So for me, the reason why I opt for that is because um, I'm a debt counselor. Remember that we every year we are checked as debt counselors. Yes. We need to renew our license. So running a business and understanding that a business, sometimes it doesn't do so well. Correct. Sometimes it's low. Sometimes there's not even enough income, you know, then you have to come up with a plan. If I had a lot of dates, I would probably wouldn't be where I am now mm -hmm. because chances I would have at some point lost my license. Uh, yes. And yes. so you look at that. The bigger goal is to actually get to a point where, where the business runs itself. It's able, you are able to, you know, it can pay itself Correct. without me having to put in so much effort. Mm -hmm. Then that's when I can go for that car. Okay, and, and, and <laughs> now let's say you're going for that car. What, 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 what are the cars that are on your bucket list you know that you would just want to buy or just drive what what are those cars look i, I not I, thinking about the money this time not thinking about the money <laughs> if i'm not thinking about the yeah. money i'll probably say maserati <laughs> <laughs> so so for me again let me just go back to your 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 your, pre, your, your point for for cars that people buy i always say affordability for a car purchase is relative to how the person lives their life, mm -hmm. right? Because you can earn 50K, I can earn 50K, and that doesn't equate to the same value for mm -hmm. both of us. Yes. Uh, you might have a house you're paying, you might have kids. True. I might have an apartment, no kids. Yeah. And I would rock up in a Maserati, for instance, mm -hmm. and then you think, okay, we earn the same money, yeah. and he drives a Maserati, mm -hmm. therefore I can also get a Maserati. Yeah. So, so. I, that's my, just, you know, when I say people, affordability when it comes to cars are really, it, that's really relative. And, and yeah. Yeah. You, you know what I would say? Uh, you, you made a good point that we can be earning the same salary, right? But we don't have the same responsibilities. And I think it's just about you not cheating yourself because you know, uh, you know, I, I always say that nobody knows your pocket better than you. Correct. So, so, so you know what you can and cannot afford. That is the truth. That's what we know. You know that I cannot afford this, but I can afford that. But I think also the pressure of look, I've been, I've been, st I've studied so hard. I've, I've been to school. Now it's it's time to reward myself. You know, and we make impulsive decisions while yeah, it's too definitely. still early. <laughs> you know, um, even you, I remember one of the the, the 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 people that applied for debt review. Um, it was a young doctor. Um, who just, you know, got a great job. You know, he just graduated as a doctor and the salary was really good. And then he's like, okay, let me get the, you know, the fastest car there is, mm. you know. But um, not looking at the other things that are involved. It was good because, you know, he could afford it when they look at uh, the assessment. On paper, yeah. Yeah, he could afford it. But now 
look at having to take care of you forget that there is a black tax if you have you know i have to take back money home i have to assist um here and there and then you have children and before you know it now the responsibilities are a lot and now that car starts to become a burden so uh, it's really just about uh not making impulsive choices mm. at an early stage and then you get some that get a great job but look at what covid what happened with Correct. covid uh people then unpredictable either, yeah. yeah either hours were cut some were retrenched so now you are in a position where you thought perhaps i bought that car a bit too early had i maybe waited two three more months then uh you know it would have been a different story mm. and you get people that get a job now a few months later after getting that car they don't have a job anymore Oh you yeah, know, and these are things that you know you can't plan for because they're unforeseen. But this is where you look at, uh, you know, uh, the, the the choice of car. Can I really afford this? You know, uh, there are some cars that even if you're not working, you know, you can just hustle here and there. <laughs> and you'll be able to pay it up. But there are some I'd that I'd like <laughs> to know which cars are those. <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah. tell me, how important is it to maintain like a positive credit score when you're considering things like buying? a car or a house how important is that i mean it's 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 good to check your credit score and i always advise people to constantly check their credit score there are certain um uh, uh, websites or apps that you can use um, on a monthly basis it's free of charge you can check your credit score and the good thing about being you know checking your credit score is that it, it gives you a, a, a um how do I put it? You are one step ahead as yeah. opposed to somebody who's not checking at all because now you know what you can qualify for, especially if you've been tracking it for months. Correct. And um, you, you like for now, I'm planning on buying, if I'm planning on buying a house. So obviously that means I need to check certain steps. I need to check my credit score. I need to make sure that, you know, um, you know, when you get a credit card, remember if you max it, that's also a disadvantage yes. because you're not supposed to use um, 50% of that uh, credit. Um, that credit. Even if it's a clothing account and they've given you just a buying power of a thousand rand and you max it all at once, it those things does affect you. Um, however, you can maintain them just so long as you, you 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 always pay on time. And I think this is the most important thing, paying, paying on time. Yeah. And a lot of people sometimes you may find that they'll say, uh, well, it's just one month, especially if, if the date is low or the installment is low. They'll say, no, but it's one month. I can pay it next month. Even double, I can still afford it. Before you know it, you can be in a trap where you are four or five months behind. behind. Because th sometimes some amounts you feel like, okay, this is little. I think that's how I got out of into dates at first, you know. Um, because I looked at the amount, I'm like, ah, but even this installment is too low. Even in two months, I can still, I can pay, it still up. pay it up. And always make sure that, uh, do not avoid debit orders. You know, I th as much as it's not pleasant, but I always say that structure your payments in such a way that you've got uh, a debit order running through, or if it's not a debit order, it's a stop order, whatever it is. Because now sometimes trying to pay certain things, EFT cash, a lot can happen. Correct. Um, a lot can happen. I have people that change, uh, you know, that come to us, change bank accounts, and then they'll say, no, but I'll carry on paying my uh, vehicle finance. I'll just send, I'll do an EFT every month. There's one month where you don't know what happened. Uh, for some weird reason, a thousand rand is less. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but with a debit order, you know that it's secure, it's safe. As soon as the salary comes in, it goes, it, it, it goes out. So that actually works a lot better than having to pay, uh, you know, uh, paying it yourself and doing multiple payments here and there. Sometimes you forget, you know. Oh, yeah. You know, I just want to, uh, for, for some reason, in my head is how do you help someone who comes to you and says, look, I've maxed out my credit card. Mm -hmm. I've got debts. How do I get out of debts? Because for me, I don't have additional money. Yeah. So, so because I think of there's a situation, a lot of people where they have cars where they, they really can't service the debt anymore mm -hmm. and they want to sell these cars. Most of the time, people sell these cars and they have a shortfall and they continue servicing yes. the shortfall mm -hmm. uh, uh, i think if people don't know that you can call the bank and say guys look i owe four hundred thousand. i've got 350 for the car let's finance the 50k and maybe you lose your car in this yeah. instance and you finance the 50k some people will go and downgrade a car and then get a cheaper car maybe that goes for about one hundred and fifty thousand. but the shortfall then they load it it becomes a 150 car but you're driving it for 200k yeah. because you've loaded 
So, so I'm just thinking, how do you help a person who say, I've maxed my credit card, man. I, I don't have additional money. <laughs> so what we do with debt counseling is that, um, you know, as I, as I mentioned, that it's a formal and legal process. Mm-hmm. And um, so what happens is that we negotiate with credit providers to say that, you know, uh, Polvia can no longer afford the contractual oh. agreement for whatever reason. So now we come and negotiate for a lower installment and a lower interest rate. Remember, the interest rate is not really complex compulsory to lower correct but we just uh, try where we can to lower the, inst- the the interest rate as well but the 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 primary thing is to lower the installment and then now we prove beyond reasonable doubt that you can no longer pay the contractual agreement and then now we propose a new payment term right so now when we propose a new payment term again there still need to be some guidelines and rules you know uh, especially because you cannot service uh, a vehicle the same way that you service a credit card correct you know so there are certain rules that we still need to, you know, um, consider certain guidelines that we still need to follow. So then we go to the bank and say that, look, you cannot uh, afford to pay the full installment. How about we reduce the installment to this much? And then we reduce the interest rate. However, we long we, we, we increase the term. The term, right? yes. And then they will come back and say, look, we agree with it. This is what can be done. The client can pay this amount and then over a certain period of time. So once the credit provider and the debt counsel have agreed, we then now need to go to court to make sure that, uh, you know, the agreement is now legal because oh. we still need to make sure that, because we need to, especially if the, in, in, in any case, we, we, we need to go to court. But r- another reason why we still need to go to court is to safeguard the assets. Let's say Correct. the person has got a car or a house, we need to make sure that they are legally protected. That's where we need to go to court and obtain a court order so yeah that's pretty much what we do and <laughs> <laughs> i'm a numbers guy i want to come in there so i pay 10 rand for my car mm-hmm. i no longer can pay my my 10 rand yeah and you go and negotiate and say okay fine out of the 10 rand uh he can probably now pay let's 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 say you get an agreement to pay five rand mm-hmm. now is my five rand now six rand because your one rand is there as the no. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, it doesn't work like that. Okay. And, and, and let me just say, with a car and a house, we've got certain rules that we, we need to follow. Correct. Um, if a client, the client is paying uh, currently 100% of the full installment, right? There's a certain amount that we cannot exceed. The bank is still liable to get 75%. Okay. So so we always push that the the reduction is within uh, um, up to a maximum of 25. Maximum, yeah. yes, yes. So it can be less, it can be 25 max, but the bank cannot obtain, uh, get less than that 75%. Yeah. Unless if it's an old car and you just left with a, a balloon payment, you may find that some people come to us with the balloon payment, where the balloon payment is like 300 and something thousand, then that's a different story altogether. Then we can negotiate for uh, even it lower than the 75%. Yeah. But the, the we must always keep the car repayments kept at 75 percent and then um sometimes creditors um demand more yeah more especially if a car is new that people who apply and get a car they haven't even paid their, f- their first installment wow. and then they apply for debt <laughs> counseling so in that case the bank can say that but this is unfair rather the client just gives the car back yes. with not with no short follow whatsoever so but most of the cases i've never had anyone who takes it back they always just say no let's do debt counseling in that case it's a special case then we have to also be fair to to you know to the rules to to the bank as well um to say that okay we cannot get that hundred uh, percent we cannot reduce it lower than we cannot reduce it to um you know we cannot reduce that 25 percent but this is what pr- prob- probably we can work on 10 percent five percent whatever it is so uh, if it's a new car altogether it, 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 we, we, it's a bit tricky but we do try and some banks just oblige yeah. same applies with the house there's a certain percentage as well that they need to get back the only thing that we are really really sure we can really um, work better for you is we reduce most of the money from unsecured debts these are your credit credit cards, overdraft, personal loan, clothing cards, credit cards, and so forth. That's where the majority of the reduction comes from, okay. from those uh, yeah. ca- unsecured debts. And, and for me, is w- in, in the 75%, yeah. <laughs> where, where is your percentage? So uh, how, this is how we charge, <laughs> yeah. right? So we charge according to uh, affordability of a client. So we do not have 
um, a fixed amount that we charge for every client. Correct. NCR does not allow us to do that. In fact, they regulate our fees. So meaning that we cannot charge what NCR does not charge. charge Again, yeah. it uh, goes back to affordability of a client. We do not have any fixed installment or any fixed amount that a client needs to pay us. We calculate to say how much can the client afford. If you can afford to pay us 2000 that means our fee is 2000 If oh. one client can afford to pay us um, 8000 that means our fee is 8,000. However, we have the fees capped for people that are heavily over indebted or that have a lot of debts. Uh, we cannot uh, cheat them out. So uh, to say that you're paying 50,000 for your debt, so that's my fee. No, it doesn't work like that. So we also have a maximum for each, um, for clients like that, you know, that you cannot exceed a certain amount. But generally, it's just about uh, paying what the client can afford. That is just our fee. No, that's great, man. <laughs> I ask that because a lot of people think, ah, if I go to a that management service, I'm in any case going to pay for their service as well. So whatever yeah. I'm going to pay for their service, I might as well pay for my debt. So yeah. that's always that no, catch-22. No, no. Yeah. It's completely different. And the, and the good thing about it is that our fees are not upfront. They are prepackaged in the installment the, yeah. the, that you're currently paying. So you're not going to pay your normal installment or the new installment plus our fee. It will be packaged, packaged in that installment uh, because uh, um, it is NCR is uh, regulated that you know the negotiation is not something that takes a week takes um, about sometimes two months sometimes three months so that we need to make sure that you pay the same amount up until the uh, you know negotiations are Correct. done and we get a court order so that's why we we include our fees in there and remember that we also have um, uh, attorneys that we work with either using an attorney or using a tribunal either way they do charge a fee for that Correct. and then the fee also must be included in that installment however we do it so we, we use uh, uh, both um, attorneys and also the NCT National Consumer Tribunal so that's how we submit our applications to get to court orders you you know to get our court orders however um it's it's it's, it's not negotiations take long <laughs> definitely no 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 definitely yeah. they do take long but hey we're learning we're learning thank you so much man and for me where do we uh where do we find you when people want to get a hold of you where do they find you um so we've got uh, certain uh, platforms um we have uh, facebook uh, we are ps debt management Instagram is ps.debtmanagement and Twitter is psdebt and then our website is www.psdebtmanagement.co.za. We are based in Pretoria North at 299 Burger Street and our landline is 012-023-2364. We also have a WhatsApp line. Uh, it's 073-586-4623. Awesome. Two last ones. Yeah. What type of cars do you like? An SUV, sedan, coupe, or uh, 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 convertible? What do you like? <laughs> um, sure. I would say convertible. Convertible. Oh, yeah. great, great. And then <laughs> drive or be driven? I'd like to be driven one day. Awesome stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming through. It's been amazing. <laughs> I've learned so much. And for you that's been listening or that will be watching, thank you so much for joining us for another incredible episode of the Drive Network here yeah, at Burger Series. We will see you soon. Peace. We out. Your boy, Big Bucks. <laughs> this is Bogart Man Radio. Radio.